But yeah, Mufti, did Caliph Abdul Malik invent Jerusalem as the third holy site of Islam during his conflict with Abdullah ibn Zubayr? Um, that is a very good question by Sam E. I do feel that Abdul Malik ibn Marwan kind of, yeah, in his time, this whole thing about Jerusalem, um, I, I feel that most, if not, probably all if not more or less all <laughs> maybe not every single thing but by and large for the most part the the genre of jerusalem in my understanding is fabricated um there was never anything so special about jerusalem except that muslims kind of honored it out of the i feel the prophet honored it out of the love that the uh, that they were former prophets associated with it through the Judeo tradition. And I feel that the uh, the Prophet wasallam honoured it out of love for that. But it wasn't, so that kind of stuff, okay, fair enough, that's admissible. Um, but I don't feel the... Um, in and of itself, it was so, um, you know, the way it's made out later on, you have so many narrations about Jerusalem and Jerusalem is this very holy place. And uh, it, it then becomes the third of the Thalith or Haramain. <laughs> this squaring a triangle goes on. <laughs> Haramain means two and Thalith means the third of the two. Right. So, um, but yeah, uh, it definitely the Dome of the Rock was created by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan in his time. And I feel that this hadith like uh, don't travel except to the three were kind of probably fabricated in his time. That's what I feel. I'm not 100% sure about that, but that's where I would lean towards that. Yeah, it seems like that because Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he... And don't get me wrong, I actually think he did huge, great things as well. He really forges out a an identity for, for Muslims. Um, so we really owe a huge percentage of our identity understanding to people like Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, who kind of forge out this, that like they, it's not that it didn't exist, but they forge it out, you see. Like it's, um, hmm, like people might misunderstand, they might think, I mean, he entirely makes it up. He doesn't entirely make it up. He doesn't make up Islam, contrary to what some Orientalists say. But he kind of creates this identitarian aspect to it. So prior to him, it seems that Muslims are kind of just very naturally Muslim. So they are Muslim, but they're not so conscientious about this identity thing. The way he, or maybe there's some aspects they are conscientious of, but the way it becomes that we are Muslim, we do this, we call ourselves Muslims, we have this, we will only, like, so for example, the state language becomes Arabic. It wasn't even the great, even people like Muawiyah and most of, you know, the documentation, the coins, these kind of things, they used Greek and Persian things. They didn't use Arabic. They, they obviously spoke Arabic, but the administrative language was still not Arabic and they didn't feel that it needed to be there was this kind of like it doesn't really matter it's not uh, like they weren't uh, like they felt it's okay it's fluid like we're just Muslim but we don't need to kind of have this um, we don't need to forge out an identity of being a separate people and definitely Abdul Malik kind of introduces that. He introduces the language. He changes the coins. Uh, first, in Muawiyah's time, if you see, there's even some of the the kind of um, Persian or Greek god symbols and things are still on the coins. They don't even change that. But he changes it to La ilaha illallah. So uh, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he makes this a symbol. Uh, he 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 realizes that in order to have an identity, we unlike the Byzantines and the Sassanids, we can't have pictures. So what he does is he realizes we can have script. 
So this creation of Arabic calligraphy really owes a huge, is indebted to people like Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, who then he kind of bolsters this aspect that instead of the way the Christians are using pictures and these Sassanids and these people were using uh, icons, we're going to use calligraphy and words. So he has on the coin, La ilaha illallah, put there. And you see, an Arabic, he makes a point, we will write in Arabic now. Like all the administration, if the scribes don't write in Arabic for us, get rid of them. We're going to get Arab scribes. So this thing is a huge push by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing, but it definitely happens in his time. So, you know, we can't pretend it didn't happen. But yeah, but I, so, but at the same time, I don't think it's like something evil he did. He was just trying to make Muslims become an identity. And it's like, like I give you an example. This is a, a bad example, but it's still an approximation. It's like nation states today. How do you create identities? Like, let's say Pakistan. How today Pakistani is an identity. A hundred years ago, this didn't even exist. The concept didn't even exist. Today, Pakistan has a an understanding with it. Oh, a certain food is associated, a language is associated, a certain kind of uh, this uh, nation myths are associated. So this is what you do. You you see, with nation states, you have to create these myths. Uh, and a myth doesn't have to be entirely false, but it's the way you piece it together to make it coherent. It maybe wasn't as coherent as you make it. And then you present it and constantly present it and until everybody accepts it. So this is how you forge identities. It doesn't mean that it's a lie, but it's just, maybe not as coherent as the person presents.